Hi, let's consider uh, criterion A2. And this is your design brief. And sort of big picture, your design brief shows that you have a good understanding of the problem. What are your, your users' needs? What's your target market needs? And giving some general parameters, some general idea of how you're going to actually solve that problem. And that's sort of the key thing that we're doing here. We are we're using the information that we um, have gathered from all of the target market research that we did in uh, before we started this project um, in order to, to, to kind of say this is how we're going to solve it. And that's, that's essentially what it is, right? If you says that you're indicating how are you going to solve this problem, that big picture. Okay, now, um, you know, you should be kind of going through, you know, how you will create it, what size, where will it be used, what are the aesthetic features, how will the user buy it, how will you manufacture it, what are the possible materials that we use. And, and this needs to be fairly broad because all of your design ideas that you're going to come up with in Criterion B should sort of fit under this umbrella. Okay, so you're, you're doing broad requirements, right? Broad means that this, is, this should, this should encompass, encompass a lot of different design ideas. Um, you should mention your, your goals and your objectives, and we'll talk about that in a second. Any constraints that you might have, like limitations, maybe, you know, uh, for instance, you, you, it can't be over a certain size or a certain weight or a certain price, you know, because you, you've done market research and understand that, that the, the price of whatever uh, particular um, product sort of market segment that you're looking at um, the products in that, in that market segment are priced about like this, and so you can't be over that price. So, you know, there's some constraints that you want to look at. And then we want to do some persona mapping. So we're going to represent the kinds of people that would be our target users. Okay, again, this is short, 150 words, so we want it to be concise. Um, and um, we want to have clarity of our goals and objectives. And so goals reflect the overarching purpose of your project. What will your project do? How will it function? And the objections, uh, the, the objectives really are looking at sort of like the details of it, right? So that we're really trying to focus on, on more of the granular, kind of like the component parts or how is this different? You should also be thinking to yourself whether you are really doing sort of a radical design or more of an incremental design. Like if you're designing something that's already on the market, but you're making it just a little bit better, or adding a feature that, that is missing from, from your research that you've noticed, then, then you would be an, an incremental. Uh, if you're creating a completely new um, product that has never existed before, then you would be um, looking at a more radical approach. Okay, and, and probably it's easier, honestly, to, to look at that incremental design. All right, so you should have your goals and objectives. Remember, so goals are like big picture. Objectives are, are more of a small, things that are different, um, that are kind of part, that make up the, the big picture, okay? Um, look at the situation where it's being used, what problem it solves, who's the target audience, any sort of standards that you might have to use, like is it standard to have a certain size or a certain weight or, uh, you know, look at look at those kinds of standards, you know, like paper. If it's, if it's something that you're using to, to store paper, well, then you would want to make sure that you have standard size sizes of, of whatever that storage unit would be. So looking at something that is, you know, going to fit A4 paper or A3 paper or A, A5 paper, something like that, right? Any sort of uh, environmental compliance or safety compliances that you need to look at, budget, timescales, other constraints. Constraints are things that are going to kind of hem you in, right? Like you're not going to make something out of solid gold because it's probably going to be too expensive. Um, you need to have a solid understanding of our users, and this is why we really want to do a persona. So we want to create a persona, okay? And, and there's examples of that. Um, and you should really look at making sure that you've created a persona map. Um, look at competition. This is where, again, you know, you should have done some market research to understand what's already out there. Okay, you could also consider doing some mood boards. So let's look at some examples of where this has happened. So here's the design brief. Once again, quite short. You know, 150 words, it's quite short, so we don't want to spend a lot of time on that. Uh, you'll notice that this person did not do a persona map, which they really should have. It would have helped um, in their grade, um, especially if, if you do it with uh, annotations, then it, it doesn't count against your words. So I would definitely do a persona map. 
on this. Okay, um, and let's look at how this was scored. So again, they, they scored in the middle bands for all three things in Criterion A, but we, it says they developed a design brief on information from the client and the internet and highlighted some of the parameters. So not all the parameters, right? They should have, in order to score better, considered the problem in terms of, of reuse or recycling of tea leaves, right? So they should have mentioned some stuff about reusing and recycling their tea leaves. And this is about a tea press, right? Like that's the whole point of this, this uh, project here is they're making a, a tea leaf press. Um, they should have had feedback from potential users and considered um, cost constraints as this is a, a giveaway product. It's meant to be something that the restaurant gives to people. So you, it would be something that you would want to look into is, is, you know, how much would this actually cost if we were to make it? Okay. So if you think about what they didn't do is they don't really consider the parameters as much. They had some of the parameters, but they were missing out on quite a few. Um, same with this one. Look at the design brief, quite short, three paragraphs. You need to be concise. Okay. Um, and you can read those separately. I'm not going to read them to you, but I just want to show you that they're, they're brief. Okay, um, again, this, this, they scored in that middle level, and you can see that they developed a design brief using research data to establish the uh, design goal, but they were limited on their parameters. Again, they did not go into the parameters enough, so they did not have enough detail about that. So you probably want to spend more time looking at parameters and then you know really just give the goal a, the most concise way possible. Okay, just it should be a, a quick pitch about what the goal is, and then be talking about parameters. So they they should have considered um, and thought more about portability and adding no constraints to the initial needs of the school and the size of the space available for the communication system. And again, if you look if you read this, they're they're basically developing a way to communicate for um, uh, grade uh, year twelve and thirteen students in a common room. So um, notice again, no persona map, and that's uh, not good in this case. Okay, so we want to have those persona maps, and we want to be concise, clear, focus on parameters, focus on on um, our our target market. Try to get all of that in there in a real concise way. 